Hello viewers, welcome to the new section, Convolutional Neural Networks. In this section, we will implement a simpler CNN and an advanced CNN. We'll retrain existing CNN models and lastly, apply StyleNet Neural Style. Now, we move on to the first video of this section that deals with implementing a simpler CNN. In this video, we will develop a four-layer convolutional neural network to improve upon our accuracy in predicting the MNIST digits. The first two convolution layers will each be comprised of convolution ReLU max pool operations, and the final two layers will be fully connected layers. To access the MNIST data, TensorFlow has a contrib package that has great dataset loading functionalities. First, we load the necessary libraries and start a graph session. Next, we load the data and transform the images into 28 into 28 arrays. Now, we'll set the model parameters. Remember that the depth of the image number of channels is 1 because these images are grayscale. We can now declare our placeholders for the data. We'll declare our training data variables and our test data variables. We will have different batch sizes for training and evaluation sizes. You may change these depending on the physical memory you have available for training and evaluating. We'll declare our convolutional weights and biases with the parameters we set up previously. Next, we're going to declare our fully connected weights and biases for the last two layers of the model. We'll declare our model. We do this first by creating a model function. Note that the function will look in the global scope for the layer weights and biases necessary. Also, to get the fully connected layer to work, we transform the output of the second convolutional layer to be flat, so we can use it in the fully connected layer. Next, we can declare the model on the training and test data. The loss function we will use is the softmax function. We use a sparse softmax because our predictions will be only one category and not multiple categories. We're also going to use a loss function that operates on logits and not the scaled probabilities. Next, we'll create a training and test prediction function. Then, we will also create an accuracy function to determine how accurate the model is on each batch. Now, we can create the optimizer function, declare the training step, and initialize all the model variables. We can now start training our model. We loop through the data in randomly chosen batches. Every so often, we choose to evaluate the model on the train and test batches and record the accuracy and loss. We can see that after 500 generations, it results in this output. Here is the code to plot the loss and accuracies using matplotlib. This plot is the softmax loss value over 500 generations. And this plot is the train and test set accuracy across our 500 training generations. If we want to plot a sample of the latest batch results, here is the code to plot a sample of six of the latest results. This is a plot of six random images with the actual and predicted values in the title. We increased our performance on the MNIST dataset and built a model that quickly achieves about 97% accuracy while training from scratch.